because nobody's making you do anything or feel any way. It's, it's you doing that. You have, that's the thing. I love that, you know, you recognizing that because you are responsible for your own actions. You're responsible the way you feel. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of First Gym Mastery. Woo! I'm very excited <laughs> because yeah. today we have a very truly amazing guest on the show. She is a real estate investor and a certified neuro linguistic programming, aka NLP, success coach. I know a lot of you might not know what that is, so be sure to stick around for the episode because this is a very powerful concept to grasp. Welcome to the show, Sue Bodin. How are you doing, Sue? I'm doing fabulous, guys. So, so grateful and so psyched to be here with you and going through this process and sharing what I know and uh, having fun while we're doing it. So, yeah. There you Absolutely. Go. Yeah. I love yeah, your energy. I feel the energy in the room already. So, <laughs> let's, get, <laughs> let's get started. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, tell us about your story, Sue. Like, who are you? Where did you come from? And how did you come to the U.S.? Yeah. So I think that, you know, I, I have to tell you, this is a, a, a great way to uh, reach folks out there that might be feeling hopeless, right? Like we all struggle. We come from a different places, different backgrounds. So I grew up in Istanbul, uh, Republic of Turkey. Um, and if, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, south of Russia, right? It's not Russia anymore, mm. but you know, it's around that region. And I came here um, when I was really young. Um, and um, struggled uh, with my, my um, I, I would say, the way I speak, the accent that I had. Um, and people would ask me, oh, where are you from? And, you know, and then they would have these pre-assumptions about what I am about, where I came from, right? Like they would ask me, oh, Istanbul, oh, great. Do they, do they cut hands over there? I was like, what? <laughs> like, oh yeah, Midnight Train or Express. Have you seen that movie? I'm like, no, 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 no. It had, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh my God. Some people just, you know, don't have the insight as to, yeah. for you as a human being, where you come from, what you experience. So I struggle with that. But really, when I started um, getting into mindset and started connecting mm. all the dots for myself, uh, what really came up for me was that my upbringing uh, and, and what type of environment I had. So I grew up with divorced parents and my, mm. my uh, dad was alcoholic and he, mm. he drank a lot. And it was, that was a really dark season, right? I was, you know, really young and, you know, six, I think they get a second divorce when I was six years old. And, you know, he would talk a lot when he drank the abusive way. And you would say to me like, oh, your mom doesn't love you, blah, 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 blah. And he could get physical at times. So um, mm -hmm. that trauma, right? Like we all have them. We have micro traumas. We have macro traumas, right? So everybody's definition or experience may differ. But for me, that was a trauma at a very high level because I made decision at that point that I'm not worthy, you see? I didn't know that consciously at the time. Subconsciously, I was making those decisions. Oh, I'm not worthy. My parents rejects me. They don't love me. Um, yeah. So when I came here, uh, United States, and started getting a job, working, you know, and I, I was like, okay, I got to go get education because I'm not, you know, I'm not making enough money. So I went and got education and, uh, you know, got in the high in the ladder of, you know, corporate world and become a director and own the department and so on. But under, from somebody looking from outside, they would see this success story, somebody coming from another country and, you know, getting a great, you know, living a life, right? Dream life. But that yeah. wasn't the case for me because I had this inner conflict. I had yeah. limiting beliefs and uh, not feeling worthy. And, you know, um, all of those things, which I didn't know consciously that was blocking from me to go forward and live the life that I wanted to live and create. So, um, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Yeah. When you said you were feeling like you were not worthy, mm -hmm. I read people like I read the psychology 
people start thinking like, oh, I maybe I need to achieve more. I need to do more every single day. I need to be more masculine. I need to be having a better career to feel like, yeah, I am worthy. Mm -hmm. People are running towards career or one certain things and they keep forgetting that they need to go inside, not outside. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not our fault, right? Yeah. Because I teach this to my clients, um, all our beliefs, everything we pick up, uh, that consciously we d we're not aware of is embedded in our subconscious mind between zero yeah. to seven years of age, where before yeah. our prefrontal cortex is not developed. So what that means is when I'm, let's say three years old, four years old, somebody's telling me, oh, you look ugly. I take that as a, oh yeah, that's the truth. That's I'm ugly. I, I can't reject that. Right. And once this executive yeah. center developed in the brain, we, you know, like nine years old, somebody comes to you and say, oh, you know, you look really trashy today. Be like, no, I don't. I don't think so. Right. I can make that determination that that is not the truth. But between zero to seven yeah. years age, you don't have that capability. So whatever you're injected in you from your parents or you're observing, OK, uh, there's a lot of money issues. Right. We ha all have. Yeah. Right. Lack. Uh, I had yeah. that. My parents argued all the time about money. So I picked up that. Not having money is painful. And, you know, so that was the association for me. It's like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta really work on hard and make money and so I can yeah. be happy. But that's the belief, right? That to be happy doesn't equal to having a lot of money. And it all depends on like you are not feeling worthy. Right. But if you read Erickson's stage of development, you will see at eight or nine years of age, when we need the most love, attention from the parents, if that's missing, mm -hmm. that ruined the whole future. Yeah. And, you know, we go through life, experience certain things. Yeah. We're looking through a lens, right? That develop yeah. zero to seven years of age, not knowing it. It's not our fault, but we need to understand that it's not who we are, right? It's the environment yeah. that we pick up on. And then we make decisions based on those beliefs and identity we develop early on in age. So there's different levels to this. Like you have your, it's subconsciously, you have your identity. Yeah. What do you identify with? I am an expert, extrovert, for example. Some people identify with being an extrovert. Some people say, oh, I'm, I am a, uh, you know, I am a rich person or I'm abundant. Well, you can say that consciously, but subconsciously it has to match. You have to be congruent. So that's where the limiting beliefs comes in. That's where the values, values are driven. Uh, those values drive our behaviors and habits. So those three levels, mm -hmm. identity, values, and beliefs, those three things stacked up yeah. in your subconscious mind that basically determines what you do every day. At so, what stage the identity has to be developed in a proper way that you can feel the value for the future for yourself? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's a loaded question. But so zero to seven years of age, obviously, we talked about that. And then there's different stages mm -hmm. after that, that you can accept or reject certain belief systems. Um, mm -hmm. But it's we're all influenced at certain stages. Mm -hmm. For example, I can give you my daughter as an example. Uh, when she was high, going to high school, even though she, you know, she, we, me and her, we're very close. We're very tight. Like we're like not really so much daughter and, and, you know, mother kind of thing, but it's like best friends. Even at that time, she was going through this stage where she did not listen to what I was saying at all. What her influence was her friends, whoever she talked yeah. to at school, that was like, they would say stupid stuff stuff. And she was like, yeah, that's true. I like it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, th th there's no way that's true. Like, can't you see that? So I was like yeah. having that, you know, my mind was like going crazy and how am I going to influence her? So there's different stages where you're being influenced by your teachers, your friends. And then later on, when you become and become a business person, which is like around 20 years old, you're influenced by business mentors, business people around you. So there's always the influence, but your identity, your, your core is between zero to sevens of age. And I think a lot of our listeners right now, we are in still in the corporate world where we are have a W2 job and we like, we're progressing in our careers. Mm -hmm. And I think you've also mentioned that you've also kind of done that corporate progression, becoming a director and everything. So 
at what point did you start to get into the mindset and personal development side of things? Yes. Where did you, where did that spark? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great question. I love that question. So I was, you know, I was uh, getting, you know, uh, going up in the corporate ladder for a while. And like I said, I wasn't happy from outside. It looked like I had everything going, uh, but I, I had really anger issues. Like I, I would, I would get triggered like that. It, I, I would, be, I was miserable at work. Actually, I would come home and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I just don't want to go to work the next day. What can I do to prevent, you know, myself get sick or something? It was really, really bad. And my triggers, of course, spill into my relationship with my husband, my daughter, right, and impacted that anger that I have bottled up inside with my dad. With all that trauma mm -hmm. and not forgiving him, all the abuse that went on, um, I didn't release that. So I started looking at different things. I was like, okay, okay, so I can do law of attraction. I can raise my frequency, my vibration. Yeah. We all know law, law of attraction, right? What? We, yeah. yeah. So I tried that. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm, you know, experiencing some things that better, right? I'm feeling better. I would do chakras, meditation. I was like, okay, what can I do? What else can I do? So I started looking at all these things and I was practicing, you know, different things, different modalities, tapping and, uh, you know, yoga and everything. And yeah. And I was like, okay, I still don't feel like I am you know, shifting in my reality. I'm still struggling at work. Uh, yeah, I have good days, but I have bad days. I was like all over the place, up and down, up and down. I was like, okay, this law of attraction, these other things I'm doing, it's not working. What am I supposed to do? And it came to the point where uh, it was a breaking point for me. Um, I, mm -hmm. and, and I was like, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. Like I got to find something. What is it? So I ran into uh, the the program that where they teach you to release all your limiting beliefs and emotions. Uh, it's called a mental and emotional release. And it's part of a program that is called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the same thing, but it's a program that teaches you that. So I had my breakthrough. They, they uh, put you through this uh, program where you can tap into the subconscious mind. Like I told you guys, I had you know, anger and fear and all these things that was blocking me from seeing clearly and creating my reality and really achieving that, uh, you know, the potential we have, right? We all have that potential, unlimited potential. What is that, right? It's like Buddha that, that was covered with mud that they chip away and there's gold inside. You guys know that story? Maybe in another time, but mm -hmm. we all have that yeah. gold inside that, you know, yeah. waiting to be discovered. And everybody has that. Everybody, you, 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 everybody has that. So that was the breaking point for me. I chipped away with that process and got into that goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that all you were so superficial, you were just laying down on the surface to trying to find the solution. Mm -hmm. The solution was deep inside. You have to go back in time in your mind to find that solution. And you also because need to have, in, the, have the tools, right? You can't just yeah. say, oh, you need to go inward. A lot of us do that. You can journal. I was doing that. I was journaling. I was doing meditation. I mean, like meditation in the morning, meditation at night. And during the weekends, I would go meditate on the beach, which was very nice. But the, <laughs> going inward, it only helps you to a certain point. You still have yeah. to have the certain tools and process to be able to process certain emotions, right? Like I had yeah. no idea that. I had to go back to my childhood and release those emotions that I've been keeping inside all these years, right? And because yeah. here's the trick, though. I, wanna, I want you to listeners to pay attention to what I'm about to say. When something happens when you're young, you make a decision, like me. I made a decision I'm not worthy, right, because of what was happening. Yeah. What your brain does is we're, we're, we are wired this way. When, when you make a decision, your brain says, oh, great, you made a decision. I'm going to show you everything that evidence to that. All the evidence you need for that, for that decision, whether good or bad. Okay? So that was not a good decision for me, right? Yeah. And even though it wasn't a good decision, this is the subconscious power that we have. Because that, that was a subconscious decision, not a conscious decision. Right. So it's saying, okay, I'm going to show you the evidence. I'm going to make that a reality for you. And that is what I'm yeah. talking about. Once you tap into that subconscious, have the tools like the breakthrough that I had, oh, 
everything just took, 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 clicked for me. I was like, oh my God, I've been living in, you know, somebody else's reality. I've been living in this, you know, cage uh, that I thought that, you know, um, I was not good enough, that I couldn't make anything happen. It wasn't that. It was just that those emotions that was holding me back, those limiting beliefs were holding me back. Once I tap into that, I was like a free, free out of the cage experience. Yeah, yeah shifting the reality. Mm -hmm. So, so for someone who's not um, experienced these type of personal development uh, experiences, can you tell us a little bit what exactly is an LP here mm -hmm. and? What was that experience like tapping into, you said tapping to yourself and the limited belief. Can you explain those terminologies in like layman's terms? Yeah. So NLP is basically um, helps you use your neuro, your how you wired, right? Neurolo neurologically, understanding how your brain works with language mm -hmm. because language matters, right? What we yeah. say matters. In the, yeah. in the world of NLP, you can use language to uh, change your, your understanding of the world. And you can explain yeah. things. You, it helps you communicate in a different level with people that you work with, you have close relationship with, and interpret in a way that uh, it's more empowering. And the programming speaks to obviously how we're programmed beliefs and values and, you know, identities that we have, how that is come into play. It's kind of like, think of it this way. When you have a car, right? You guys are guys. So I'm going to talk about cars. <laughs> so when you have a car, it comes with a manual, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're like, oh, what is this button? Oh, I don't know what this button is. Let me look at the manual, right? So NLP is that manual for your brain. <laughs> Make sense? No, we just press it. <laughs> Yeah, just press it. See what happens. Whoop. See what happens. <laughs> oh, I love it. And, and I think, you know, I think this is my favorite topic, like, you know, mindset, psychology and everything. Yeah. You said something about language. I was listening to Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And let's pick any topic. Let's say we are fighting. Mm -hmm. And if Austin asks me, oh, you know, Sue is very irritating, something like this. And we, are, we had a really big fight. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Yeah, she's a little, uh, like, a little irritating. Irritating? She's so bad. She had a big fight. I'm like, irritating. I change the language, put the big fight in a small word. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, okay. It's, it doesn't make me too much difference to me. Because it's For the record, bad. I never said that. No, I'm, 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 just, I'm just giving an example. You can say like, Aman is like, he's a crazy idiot or whatever you want to say it but if I, if you say oh he's a little irritating like, irritating is not it's a he's a big mess how are you saying it's just a irritating mm -hmm. your language mm -hmm. change your mindset right away yeah if i'm so tired and i say oh if other person is bothering me yeah irritating mm -hmm. i don't have to be like oh he's he I don't want to pardon my French. He's a super freaking asshole. <laughs> Whatever. I said, he's an idiot. That's it. Yeah. So emotions. Change the language. Yeah. So that's a great example. So emotions have levels, right? Yeah. So if I say and something I also, like, <laughs> I'm frustrated with him or with her, that's yeah. one thing. But if I say, I'm angry with her, I'm yeah. angry with her. Like there's a level, like there's a difference between, oh, I'm just frustrated with her or even put in a little, uh, you like you said, the word in the front. I'm a little irritated by this versus I am if, super irritated by it. You see what I mean? Like it, it, it has yeah. levels. You can use the language yeah. to really lower it down and, and yeah. see where you're at at the level, like scale, right? Are you scaling up? You're escalating or do you want to yeah. use your language to bring it down a little bit so that you can manage And it? if I say, oh. I'm a little tinkered. Tinkered? Are you really serious? <laughs> tinkered. Thanks, okay. thanks to th yeah. thanks to Tony Robbins. Yeah. He, I'm like, I read his book. Yeah. You're a little tinkered, really? Yeah. That's what you want to say? He was making a big mess. Yeah, a little tinkered. Yeah. Because I'm not giving my energy to that person to make my reality in a worse way. Right. Yeah. I'm not using the. I'm not using that word. I'm using the word that can load it down, not just like explode it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the most and, important, here, here's the thing, we're talking about emotions and words, how we use words. And I, yeah. you know, I talk about this a lot is, is it kind of goes into a little bit about 
self love, right? It, it, and, yeah. and because we are the worst critics of, of, of ourselves. Have you ever noticed that? Like, yeah. you're like, oh my God, I don't look good on camera. I, you know, I, I, you know, my accent, <laughs> right? Like, whatever, or my beard, like, it's, I have to, like, you know, make it, for, whatever it is, you know, we're the worst critic of ourselves. I'm not good at this. Oh my gosh, I suck at this, right? And how we talk to ourselves internally, not yeah. just externally, right? Internally, yeah. because that conversation goes on forever. You can't cut that off. Yeah. Like if I don't like you, I can say, okay, I'm on, see you later. And I can just walk away from you and not have another word and calm down, come back. But internal yeah. dialogue goes on forever. You can't shut that off. So it's so important to focus on empowering words and what you're saying to yourself and catch it. Catch what yeah. you're saying to yourself, right? I used to say so many things uh, like, um, uh, oh, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I can't be like, I, I didn't even like the way I sounded. My, now I love it, but you know what I mean? Like I, mm. I didn't even want to listen to myself because all those conditioning I have, oh, you have an accent or yeah, oh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, I, what did you say? I didn't understand, well, you, you know, because your accent, right? <laughs> so I was, I, I couldn't even listen to myself. I was like, oh, I don't like the way I sound. No, no, yeah. I, you know, that's, that's so important to, to really, that goes back to identity, right? What are you identifying yeah. with? Do you really identify with someone that in that relationship you have with yourself, right? I mean, so and I want to share, yeah. yeah, I want to share recent experience. I was driving, I was getting late. There was a traffic oh. There's a, and the whole lane is empty. The guy in front of me, he's listening to music, enjoying going slow. Yeah. I could be like, this guy's idiot. I, I said it this way. This guy is idiot. You know, he's making the whole traffic slow. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, no, I don't have to get mad. Yeah. I can be like, he is a little irritated. <laughs> I wait for like 30 seconds, change the lane, went my own way. I don't have to make my mindset in a worse way mm -hmm. just because of him. Yeah. I just use an easy word to make the easy solution. Absolutely. If I say, oh, this guy is like, no, he, he's a big ass. He don't know how to drive. What is he doing? I can be like, make my mindset, make my, um, I don't know how, what word should I use is like giving my peace to him. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, like, it's, I don't want to. it's so interesting because, um, you know, you, you could be stuck in traffic. I used to commute and I, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, people here in Miami, they crazy, crazy driving. I don't know where you were driving, but like. I'm in LA. LA. <laughs> 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 I feel sorry for you. <laughs> okay. Similar. Let's just say. <laughs> but uh, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no. I mean, you know, people go through actual red light. You know, they don't stop. Right. They just go. I'm not talking about last minute, okay? You've been sitting there. It's been uh. red for a few seconds, and they go through. <laughs> uh, pretty dangerous stuff. But anyway. Uh, I, I call them top G. Top G? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, my God, I'm going to stop it. Okay. Then. Well, you have to explain what top G is because I don't know. <laughs> top All gun? Right, top turn. gun. <laughs> oh, like, it's like gangster. Like, he uh. don't care. Let's just call him Top Gun, maybe. <laughs> Top G, right? Top Gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have another story for Top Gun. I'll tell you after the uh, podcast. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I love Top Gun. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can either sit there and say, this person is making you do something or feel a certain way, right? That's not, that's yeah. not the truth, is it? Because nobody's making you do anything or feel any way. It's it's you, you doing that. You are the one doing it. You have yeah. that's the thing. I love that you know you recognizing that because you are responsible for your own actions. You're responsible uh, the way on, you feel. On, on happiness. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, they, it's an internal yeah. job, right? People say that. That's yeah. why. Yeah. That's why I mentioned is this is gonna be my favorite um, podcast episode. That's right. That's right. So. So should we talk about real estate? Because I know your listeners are interested in real estate, right? Yes, I was about to ask that question on behalf of my <laughs> listeners, because how the, I mean, I love this topic. I can talk about this all day. This is what I live and die for is being aware about my subconscious mind and how I am making a conscious choice in my life instead of going in life in an autopilot mode yeah. without making yeah. any decisions. 
and have other things making decisions for me. So does all of this having to do with real estate at all? I mean, real estate investing, isn't it all about numbers and capitals and networks? Where does all of this fit in? Oh, great question. So all these things, you, listeners listening, we're going to make connection here, make the dots connect. So mm. just to tell you a little bit about me, how I made the connection and get into real estate, because about, I, I want to say 15 years ago, do you guys, you guys know Robert Kiyosaki, right? Everybody knows Robert yeah, Kiyosaki, yeah. right, right. Mm. So, but you're young enough, you probably don't know. Back in the day, he had a program where you can actually back in the day you could actually go into a big conference room and they would present the information you would go back in the room to buy stuff remember those days mm. <laughs> so I, so we did not just about real estate probably yeah no he, <laughs> a lot he, had of the other a, he actually and, he actually had a program for real estate actually mm. you know back then um the 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 game we were playing was different right oh there you go oh oh wow okay we have we have to have a separate conversation about that that picture <laughs> But back in the day, um, they had this program. You can get into program and they would teach you how to invest in real estate. He signed up for that program. So he had the cash flow um, uh, software game. We even bought the game and yeah. we would make our daughter play the game, understand cash flow, how to use money. That was like 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago. And so we did that. And we didn't make any traction with that whatsoever. And we would see people, oh, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that. We were like, okay, so what, what are we doing here? So we gave up. We were like, okay, look, that's, that didn't work. Then we get into a couple of different businesses and we're like, yeah, no, that's not for us. And it didn't work. We made some money here, but we lost it and all kinds of things. So everything is created in the mind first. So if you have a cluttered mind, if you have the, the mind that the, it's not performing, it's not functioning at the top level, like we just talked about, mm -hmm. releasing all the things that blocking you, then you're not going to see what's in the front of you like we did in back then and mm -hmm. all the way through all those years starting different businesses. Now, a couple of years ago, we uh, obviously I had my breakthrough, right? I started seeing things so clearly that I was like, oh, my God, I, I actually can create wealth. Like, I can do this. And I started doing different mm -hmm. things and looking at the businesses. And we're, you know what? We're not, I'm not afraid of real estate anymore. You know, I was afraid of it. I was like, oh, these are the big dogs, right? Like, how am I going to even do something with don't, – don't you see on TV, like, everybody's talking about millions mm -hmm. they're making? And what am I? Who am I to make millions, Right. No longer, okay. right? I had my breakthrough. I was like, no, 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 no. This is the game I want to play too. And I can. You see the confidence, the shift in my mind? Yeah. So it's everything's created in the mind first. So I signed up for yeah. real estate. And then the history, you know, obviously we have properties now. We're way into, you know, real estate and making more deals and doing better and better. We're start actually talking about doing another business. <clears throat> that complement our real estate business. So yeah. we're not afraid anymore. We're just really tapping into our mind to create what we want to create. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to say something about mindset again. When people say real estate investment is hard, starting a podcast is hard, mm -hmm. this thing is hard. Why it has to be easy? If that's easy, anybody could do it. Why things has to be easy? You want to make money? You want to create wealth? Why it has to be easy? If, the, if that's easy, we won't have any homeless people. We won't have any issues in society. Things are hard. That's why they are there. You know, and I, I, I love that you brought that up because that's the yeah. mindset that I had, right? Oh, look at these people making millions of dollars. How am I going to do that? It's hard to do that. Like, how, where do I come up with the money? Or I, I, where do I even start? What do I look at? What, how yeah. do I? I didn't have financial literacy. You see, I had no idea yeah. my expenditures and how I can get out of debt and how I can raise money to make deals happen. All of those things. Um, but the mind says you're not good enough. And it's like you're saying yeah. it's hard, but not necessarily. So this is, I so reframe why? that. I reframe that. I, mm -hmm. Because in my, in my experience, when you say it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. That doesn't mean, uh, though, that doesn't mean that you don't, you don't have to be disciplined, that you don't have to give up on things, that you don't have mm -hmm. to invest in your education. <clears throat> Most yeah. people, 
Most people don't want to give up watching TV. Most people don't want to、yeah. get out there, you know, get out of the couch and really do some,、gym. yeah, self reflection and say, oh, wait a minute. I, I have some things I need to work on and I need to change、mm-hmm. my life. That's a risk. That's a huge step people don't want to take. I re- no, Let me give you an example that most people don't know about me. So I'm going to say something here that hopefully、yeah. it won't come back around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was miserable, I would come home and I would watch video games, particularly COD,、uh, which is no, like a gun game. Okay. You're shooting people. I, I never okay. You, okay. So I used to play video games, which is really like very odd thing to do for a woman, right? Come home. Hi. I can't cook dinner. I'm going to play video games. Okay. So it's weird. But I did that because I was trying to escape the, the unhappiness, the, the dullness, that emptiness I had inside. And I had some, you know, I was drinking. I was, I was ref- deflecting, right? What's kind of not working. Kind of a coping、working. mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Coping mechanism. Right. So a lot of us do that. A lot of us just、yeah. want to go home.、Uh, you know what? I'm just going to put on a movie, forget about my problems, and hopefully they'll go away tomorrow. But that doesn't happen. It happens when we don't want to hold ourselves accountable. Right, right. And、so、don't think、mm-hmm. that you're a victim, right? Like, oh, you know,、yeah. my parents didn't raise me a certain way. I don't have money. I really don't. I don't have the key. I don't have ability. I, I don't know. I don't、yeah. have the, you know, the, the you know, resources. Right? I don't have anything like, to do. Even,、mm-hmm. yeah. even people in the relationships, when they break up, they jump at another one because their mind is like, no, I don't want to face that、uh, pain. I want pleasure. I don't want to go hard way. I want to go easy way.、Mm-hmm. People jump from one relationship to another, to another, to another, just as a coping mechanism. They don't want to ha- hold themselves accountable. So I want to take a、mm-hmm. moment here. Perfect, perfect. I, thank you for that, Aman. I want to take a moment for all of those who are listening right now. Okay. I want to take a moment to tell you there is hope. It doesn't matter where、yeah. you come from, it doesn't matter who raised you. Okay. Remember my story.、Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who raised you. It doesn't matter that you don't have resources. It's possible. Okay. I am、mm-hmm. now, I'm not going to say exactly how old I am, but I'm not young, right? I'm over 50. And I don't sit here and say, I am too old to do anything. I am too old to start something new. I, my, I didn't have any resources. I created my own resources. Okay. So it's, I want you to know that it's possible if you really look at things from a different perspective. Don't sit there and say, well, you know what?、Um, you know, I don't know how to do this. So it's not going to work for me. And I did other things in the past. I have. And I gave up. I was like, oh, this is not for me. I'm not an entrepreneur. I have zero entrepreneurs in my family. That was my identity,、oh, right? I didn't have identity that said, oh, I, you can be an entrepreneur. You can go out there and take risks and create something new. I always thought that I was not a creative person. That was my identity before. So I'm here to tell you that there's so many possibilities for you. Please, please, please. If anything you want to take away from this podcast, I want, to, I want you to think about what's possible. Start there. What's possible for you? Just sit down and think about what's possible for you. And for me, I had the breakthrough. Yes, I had tools. But you can also, by just getting out of that victim mentality, say, you know, I, I am not that person anymore. I am this person, whatever that is for you. I am abundant. I am a. A、uh, deal maker, I'm an investor, whatever it is. Change your identity. Yes, and start there. Start there. Make a、yeah. decision, though. That's the first step. So today, when you listen to this, you're going to go, whatever you go, sit down, make a new decision. Whatever decision you made in the past、uh-huh. is not applicable to you anymore. Make a new decision.、Uh, I, w- I want to make a comment. Yes. I'm going to、um, make. What you said in an easy language, find the pattern and change the pattern. Right, right. Yeah. Thanks, to, Don, thanks、so、to Tony Robbins.、Tom. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah me too, right? Not, <laughs> Everybody loves to, Tony. Because it's not so much about how we're trying to convince ourselves, oh, we needed to do this. It's not, it's, it's, it almost has nothing to do with kind of pushing yourself to it. It's 
like a switch mm -hmm. that you can just flick. Yeah, and because the, you see, the flick is always there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you you didn't have the so zero to seven years old. We talked about you don't have that ability to make a new decision. Somebody says something to you, yeah. you can't say, "Oh, I'm not going to believe in that. I'm going to believe in this." Right? You don't. You can't do no. that. But now you can. Now you can say, mm -hmm. you know what? My dad used to say, you know, uh, you have to work hard to make money. Did your, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. My dad used to say that, right? Oh, my dad used to say that too. Right. So we <laughs> all have so many beliefs instilled in it. You know, I want to, I want to say something about our parents because we talked about them a lot today. It, yeah. They did the best they could. They mm -hmm. did the best with what they had because they had their own yeah. traumas, right? They had their own belief system and that's what they thought was the best at the time. And I, I have forgiven my dad. I, I actually love him because he made me who I am. If, if the have, things didn't happen to me at that age, the way they did, I would be somewhere else yeah. in my life. So I'm so grateful that ha yeah. what happened to me happened to me. So yeah. we can forgive have, and yeah. move forward and understand that yeah. we can change what we're conditioned to believe. Yeah, hmm. go ahead, Amar. I have a question. Yeah. So you to do, you said about trauma. Mm -hmm. Many people, because these are traumas in the subconscious mind. Right. Many people have those traumas, but they don't even know they have traumas. They realize it when it's too late. Yeah. And how do people... It's never too late. ...find out about those... <laughs> No, some, no, no. Sometimes uh, people are people are doing the same mistake in their all the relationships mm -hmm. in their businesses, but they're ruining their partner partnerships. But they don't know that's because of the trauma. Not the partner partner is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before they ruin everything, when can they find about these things that they can get better and understand? Yeah. At at what age? Well, I mean, everybody's on a different journey. Everybody's mind is yeah. wired. That's what everybody is so beautiful to me. Because when I talk to people, um, you know, their mind, like I'm fascinated by how they think, right? Because everybody's different. Yeah. So we can't just put an yeah. age to it. Oh, you know, at this age, you can rewind. So there's right now, there's so much research in uh, neuroscience. We know that you can change your mind at any age neuroplasticity mm -hmm. right we heard we all heard mm -hmm. about that yes no okay shake your head yes what is neuroplasticity <laughs> what that means is you, to your listeners mm -hmm. neuroplasticity if you haven't heard about it what that means is you can rewire your brain at any age and i just gave you the secret to it the secret to it mm -hmm. is to make a new decision because your yeah. neurons firing the same way right over and over again when you when you're in the old you that me, my old me was, oh, I'm not, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. Or I don't even know how, where to start. Am I, am I going to lose my money? Am I going to be successful? What if somebody, you know, sees my failures and reject, you know, all that good stuff, right? Old me. And the new me, I had to make a decision. I was like, okay, that's, I am going to make this work. Yeah. I am going to be an investor. Don't worry about the how. Okay. I'm going to give you another secret, another gem. Your conscious mind, okay, write this down if you want to write this down. Your conscious mind is the goal setter. You set goals mm. with your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the goal getter. Hmm. Ah. Okay, so you set a goal and your subconscious mind goes, okay, how is, how is your subconscious mind? It shows you possibilities. It shows you different paths. And now that you have new neurons firing, firing, firing the same way, you're looking at the different way. You're seeing things in the front of you that you wouldn't see before. You see, mm -hmm. that's the beauty of making a new decision. It, you know, I can always help you work with you, do the breakthrough. But if you don't want to, you know, have that conversation, let's say with me, continue that conversation, write down the new decision and identify with that new decision and let the subconscious show you new possibilities. Um, I think they're very excited for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just sharing here left I and right. You, I don't want to discourage my, that. So please my, go ahead. One of the a favorite topic. I made a decision. No matter what happened, I'm going to say, oh, I'm good. That's it. Like if some, if you ask me, how are you? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a tsunami, earthquake, I don't care. Yeah. I'm good. 
Yeah, because but you, you know, you have to be careful with that. <laughs> you can say, I'm good, I'm getting better and better. And this is, mm-hmm. this is kind of goes into always, always positive mental attitude, right? That's, that's, mm-hmm. we need to pay attention to. But I want to get into a little bit about your mind, your subconscious mind. Consciously, you may mm-hmm. say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But it's subconscious, there's something there. Now you're in conflict with what you're saying. What you're saying has but, to be believable. Mm-hmm. So you can say something like this. Let's say there's an earthquake. It's hard to say I'm good. Yeah. Like you lost everything, right? I mean, let's be real here, right? You can sit there and say, you know what? I lost my house. I, you know, sit down and cry if you have to, okay? Be in the moment, okay? Feel that mm-hmm. emotion. Don't hang on. That's the key. Don't hang on to that emotion. Sit down and experience mm-hmm. it, okay? Then you say, okay. I lost the house. I lost this. Hopefully there's no person that you love been lost. That's a bigger loss. But if it's a materialistic thing, you can say, okay, I lost this. Okay. Um, how, okay. What do I need to next to take care of myself no. and make my that, life that, that's, I'm gonna, better, yeah. right? Like how, what, how can I raise, rise from this? How can I rise from the ashes? Right? How do I do that? that and, yeah. Start looking at ways, okay, so I, I need to find a place, basic needs. You, I need to go find a place to live. Now, that's taken care of. Okay, I need to go back and take care of X, Y, Z. So you set a plan for you to, okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise from the ashes. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of my family. It's going to be okay. When you, that, face, when you face what's yeah. going on, instead of ignoring it, you're playing the game in a different level, right? Most of us look at what's mm-hmm. happening. We're like, oh, no, 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 that, no, that's not, no, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to acknowledge it. If I don't acknowledge it, I'm okay. That's no, the wrong that's way to saying. do it. Yeah. yeah. But every day I wake up in the morning, I just say one thing, yes. as long as God is making me, waking me up in the morning, I'll achieve everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, even if there's, a, oh, that's something, even there's an earthquake, I'm going to sit and, for, wait for like five minutes. Oh yeah, what's the next step? Right, right. I'm because I'm not just going to sit and cry. The house is gone. Yeah, what's the next step? Call the insurance so, company. <laughs> Get the claim. <laughs> Hopefully, you have insurance. <laughs> oh, I have insurance. Are you have insurance? I have a good insurance. Okay. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we don't have earthquakes in Florida. We have hurricanes. So you know, and we oh, got hit California. by hurricanes all the time. I mean, you know, we get. I think the last one, really bad one, was two years ago. And we, mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't have a lot of damage, but there's, you know, it is always that. Sh- Here's the beauty of life, guys. So, you know, whether you're an investor, whether you're a business owner, or you're working with W2, there's always going to be something. That's, that's yeah. what the, the, the beauty of being alive, because how do you feel alive? If everything's mm-hmm. always good, do you, I mean, okay, you feel good for a while. But you're like, okay, I'm yeah. bored. Like, what's next? That's how we're keep wired. The real, keep that reality in mind as well. If yeah. you have to go back in time, what you're going to take? What you're going to do next step? Yeah. Yeah. But That's uh, So <laughs> when it... All right, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Austin. Yeah. And so uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a comment. Like, um, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't focus on positivity. I don't focus on negativity. I focus on achieving the greatness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to say about that? Oh, God, that's... <laughs> so what do you mean when you say you don't focus on negative, you don't focus on positive, just greatness? Explain to me a little bit more. Like, how can I get better? Mm-hmm. How yeah. can I be best? Yeah. How can I make my best version of myself? Absolutely. What I'm learning today. Yeah. Those things. And that is a mindset. That is a mindset. It's, it's not like I, I, all the things we've been talking about right here that you, making a new decision, uh, seeing the possibilities, um, and really like, you know, we talked about going inward, but you have to face yourself in the face of whatever you're facing, right? Because whatever mm. we create, we create. It's not just created yeah. on its own. Like things doesn't appear yeah. out of nowhere. Like when I was having issues with work, with people and, you know, I always felt like people were after me. Like they were coming out, oh, no. they're trying to get me fired or, you know, take away certain, because I I've always felt like I, I had this kind of like not being good enough, right? Not being mm. good enough. So it's showing up 
in places where you may not even think it's showing up. So you really need to kind of say, okay, why, why is this, why am I, why am I experiencing this right now in this area of life? And you may be, you may be that you have the perfect relationship and you're, you're, you can't make the money, or it could be that you're okay with the money, but you don't have the relationship. You see what I mean? Like you need to say, okay, why, why this is not working for me and what has uh, my experiences that I had growing up and those experiences that tie to my decisions, my beliefs, my identity, sit down and really think about that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then say, okay, like you said, greatness, right? Be obsessed about it. Like I, I want to be better than yesterday. Right. And you do yeah. too. And so that's where it, that's where it starts. How, how we can face ourselves because a lot of people, it's really hard. Like, for example, I was mm -hmm. coaching my client today and uh, we got into a little bit of relationship conversation. I, I'm a business coach, so I don't do relationship. Uh, but because I love him so much, I was like, okay, let's take a, take a peek. What's going on? <laughs> let's talk about it. So, uh, so he was like, okay, okay. So he was like, okay, so I love my wife. Um, and he, she loves me like unconditionally. It's just amazing love. Right. I'm like, okay, so what's the problem? <laughs> so he was like, okay, when she says, I love the way you are because he, we're working on some of the things that is like, you know, health wise and things like that. Have, he wants to have a better body because, you know, he's aging and he's looking at that. So he was like, when he when she says, I love you the way you are, I, I, I believe her, but deep inside, I'm like, I, I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't feel it. Like I, I, so, so working with the subconscious, subconscious triggers. what subconscious we discovered, triggers. what we discovered is that he doesn't love himself. Yeah. Subconscious triggers. Right. So you don't love yourself, right? When I, if I don't love myself, it's so hard for me to accept love, unconditional love from, from somebody else. From other person. Right. Yeah. So it all starts with you. It all starts yeah. with you. And once you figure that out, once you have that kind of self-reflection, just kind of say, see what's going on, what has happened and how, how I can change that and how I can rewire my brain by making new decisions. Mm -hmm. And now you're taking steps forward. And then of course, I'm always here, right? I'm, I'm loving to have these conversations. You can always reach out to me and have a deeper oh, oh, conversation. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, Austin uh, is having a breakthrough. <laughs> More like having awesome. a break. He's always having a break too. Right, Austin? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, Sue. Appreciate it, man. All right. So uh, I, 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 I want to continue this conversation forever, but I do want to shift gear and ask one question yes. that I've been meaning to ask for like three times, but I'm on, oh. you, you have so many value to share. I'm sorry, um, Austin. <laughs> so when it comes to the different limiting beliefs that you have worked with with your clients, when it comes to real estate investing, what are the most common limiting beliefs that you have encountered? Oh God, that's that's a loaded story, loaded question. Um, well, so well, he's Austin. One, the, <laughs> we, do we have another hour? Okay, we don't. But <laughs> let me let me steal it down to one main area. I think that not just the investor, but we all experience. If you want to create wealth. We mm -hmm. really need to work on our relationship with money, right? Yeah. Like, for example, um, I, I had a client that, uh, and I, I experienced this myself as well, so it's not just clients, but he was like, okay, so I want to invest in this and this and this and this. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. You know, I was like, okay, well, when you invest in that, you're, isn't that you're investing in yourself? You're investing in yourself, mm -hmm. right? You're, you know, you're going to get education. You're going to get a, you know, uh, all these extra tools and process. And, you know, it's going to take you to the next level, right? It's like, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I just don't know if I, you know, he has the money. Like, he can come up with the money, but he had money mm -hmm. blocks, right? Like, we all want to, mm -hmm. we all want to get to the level where we don't have to worry about money. And that's one thing that I, I see over and over and over again our relationship with money. How do we work on that? And let me give another tip. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, interesting because people talk to me and they're like, oh yeah, I want to make million dollars this year. I'm awesome. Great. Um, then I work with them. 
it's like consciously they they know they want to make more money. They want to be wealthy. They want to make a change in the world, right? But subconsciously, they don't believe they can do that because they have money blocks. They don't have a good relationship with money. They can't spend the money. They are hanging on to money, right? All of those things is sign. One thing you need to ask yourself to see your limiting belief about money is uh, when I was growing up, money was blank. What was money when you were growing up? Hmm. Right? Kiwi. Yeah. <laughs> money didn't make sense when I was growing up. Like, I, it was lack. I grew up with lack. Like, we just talked about money doesn't grow on trees. So I thought, okay, yeah. money is this taboo. Like, I I'm have to work my butt off to make it. So, yeah, your relationship with money just mm. comes up all the time. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah, and of where course. can people go go and find out more about you? Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so I wanna I wanna honor you know all of your listeners listening to this <laughs> and thank you so much for being here, listening to this. Um I wanna continue the conversation. It's not a sales call, please. Um I'm a horrible salesperson. <laughs> No, I'm not. But I'm not here to sell anything. <laughs> uh, what I'm here to do, what I'm here to do is to really help people. That's my passion. So I want to continue this conversation. So please reach out. Uh, Sue Bodin, uh, Pathfinder on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn, Sue Bodin Pathfinder. If you Google Sue Bodin Pathfinder, you'll find me. SBPathfinder.com. That's my webpage. You can book a call. It's free one hour free strategy mm -hmm. session. We can sit down and really deep down. You think that you're getting value out of this? I can give even more value when we're doing a one-on-one -on -one because it's more customized to you. So let's have a conversation. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting a lot of value out of it. Look at my face. I'm glowing. <laughs> yes. And I can see the shift like, oh, wow. Omar, you're like, yeah. I don't know if it was the jumping that helped you, but I don't know. <laughs> This is one of my favorite topics. Okay, okay. Yeah, I appreciate and la it. Last question. Yes. Last question. If somebody has to learn more about mindset, mm -hmm. what book they can read that they can give them, get any kind of breakthrough? Oh what my book goodness. do you recommend? I'm just going to give a couple of people to follow because mm -hmm. um, when I look at books, I don't, I don't read books that mainstream, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. so you may not be familiar with the books. Um, one of them, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give one, I'll give one. Um, how to raise your sal salary is by Napoleon oh. Hill. So now, now I want to say something here. Okay. It's not think grow rich. It's a book that is hidden that I found mm -hmm. because I like to, I like to do research on authors and things like that. So get that book. It's on my Facebook. Go to my Facebook, Subodin Pathfinder. Find that video. I talk about the book a lot. Uh, and it shows the cover and everything. You can see it and get a feel for what I'm talking about. Uh, get that book and also follow like Bruce Lipton and Dr. Joel Dispenza, obviously Tony Robbins, but these are like mainstream. Um, you can always follow me because I talk about mindset and how mm. I can help you. Uh, yep. But those are the people that I think I would start there because they talk about conditioning, right? Programming, how to, how do we break from, from a matrix, right? Like ma we're plugged into the matrix and we're working, 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 but there's a different word out there. Unplug, right? How do you do that? So I would start there. And then, of course, you know, we can talk further if, if you need more help. I'm glad that you shared the word Matrix. <laughs> My favorite movie. My favorite movie. <laughs> I want to get, when the bullets fly in, I want to do that. Go back like this. <laughs> That's me, you know, dodging things when I, before I had my there breakthrough. You. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much Thank for being so here much, with Sue. us today, Sue. Yeah, I, was a great, this is great, such a great session. Yeah, thank you, Thank guys. you so much. I, I love you guys. Uh, I think that this is amazing what you're doing. Um, and to all the listeners, I love you guys. Um, you know, like I said, so many possibilities. So I hope that you're inspired. And this, uh, you know, makes you want to take action. That was my goal. When I joined, I was like, I want somebody to take action. If I, If you take action... That's a win. So that's a win for everybody. Perfect. One more unplugged from the matrix. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> Thank All you right. So much. See you guys in the next one. Thank you for listening. In. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you.